Political correctness. I've made video after video criticizing political correctness when it is overbearing, often related to feminism, Islam, Black Lives Matter, transgender issues, microaggressions, cultural appropriation, you name it. Short videos, long videos. I've made videos where I've been critical of politically correct culture on college campuses, where I denounce trigger warnings, safe spaces, language policing. I've made multiple videos debunking things Reza Aslan has said, not disconnected from political correctness. One of them is 25 minutes long. I have a long track record of going after liberals and conservatives when they're being unreasonable, fanatical, or trying to call people bigots who don't deserve it. I've been outspoken about not being in favor of political correctness when it's at odds with empirical realities or when it tries to limit free speech or open debate. But political correctness is a complicated issue, and there are serious misconceptions about political correctness. And the term, much like regressive left, is often used by conservatives to criticize realities that they simply do not like. I'm going to discuss with you what political correctness really means, and more importantly, how we can make productive distinctions between overbearing political correctness and mere social norms that encourage us to treat each other with respect and common decency. The first uses of the term political correctness in the U.S. were by right-wing ideologues in the latter part of the 20th century merely to criticize the left. The concept of political correctness was originally just a ruse by conservatives to belittle progressive attitudes and policies. They said, oh, you're just being politically correct if you support things like environmentalism, gun control, social safety nets, or if you're anti-war or anti-death penalty. It was a trick at first, a way of saying that the mainstream media is liberal and conservatives are victims and progressives are just trying to control the conversation. And the term political correctness is still used in that way today. Outlets like Fox News overuse the term to try to fool their conservative audiences into believing that the left is out to get them, that by opposing progressive ideas rather than phrases or vocabulary, they will be fighting the good fight and doing a great deed. Before we pick apart this perverted and subjugated misframing of political correctness, I have to point out the irony that conservatives are just as guilty of promoting political correctness when it suits them, including language policing and so-called offensive speech. The war on Christmas, where Christian conservatives get triggered if someone says happy holidays or shows deference to the undeniable reality that not everybody's Christian and not everybody celebrates Christmas. Or when conservatives respond to critiques of our foreign policy or economic system by saying, oh, that's anti-capitalist or anti-American or hey, you don't support the troops. This is the right-wing equivalent of shutting down debate by saying that's offensive, something conservatives slam progressives for doing. Where people start getting confused about political correctness is when political correctness is conflated with simple decency. The idea of calling a transgender person, him or her, based on what they prefer to be called, that's not political correctness. That's called not being a prick. If you meet someone named Timothy and they tell you, hey, just call me Tim, and then you proceed to call them Timothy, you're now a jackass. How is it going to hurt you or hurt society if you just address people how they want to be addressed or treat them how they want to be treated if what they're asking is reasonable and imposes no undue burden upon you? Your rights aren't curtailed, nor your freedom of speech restricted if you call someone a little person instead of a midget, simply because that's what they want to be called. It doesn't change any conversation. It doesn't oppress you. These are just matters of treating someone with dignity, not a matter of manipulating discourse and controversies in an oppressive or overbearing way. It's no skin off your back, and it doesn't change the discussion. If you call someone Inuit rather than Eskimo, if you call someone a Native American instead of Indian, if you call someone transgender instead of tranny, 
Do you think it's a bad thing that we no longer say colored people or use the N-word and now we say black people or African Americans if that's who we're talking about? No reasonable person would say it's a terrible thing that we don't go around calling people Negroes anymore. The fact that we don't use that word anymore isn't because the left is trying to control society and manipulate people's thinking. It's because black people don't want to be called Negroes, and both that term and the N-word are linked to a horrifying and undeniable reality of our country's past called slavery. But there were absolutely people decades ago complaining that America had gotten too politically correct when this word started going away. And those people are analogous to those today who say, I'm not going to call a transgender person him or her based on their preference because it doesn't sit right with me and I don't want to change. Who really cares? Just treat people with respect. Right now, we're in a societal phase where the transgender community is gaining acceptance for the first time in many ways. Calling people by their preferred pronouns doesn't stifle your speech. Allowing people to define themselves doesn't shut down political discussions. The result is a society that is more inviting to everyone, no matter who they are. And we can see these changes from generation to generation. People have become more tolerant and pluralistic, less bigoted over time, because of so-called political correctness. It requires the most modest of efforts to give a damn about other people. Doing otherwise usually just presents your mere lack of understanding of what it's like to be someone else. Many people simply cannot imagine what it would be like to be black or gay or female, whatever. Anti-PC people often advocate for social justice for their own group, but not for others. People who spend all of their time talking about political correctness also often get confused about the idea of free speech. Many of them invoke the First Amendment in situations where it just doesn't apply. The First Amendment protects Americans against censorship by the government. Any private citizen asking you to speak a certain way doesn't violate your First Amendment rights. But even if you use a broader definition of censorship or free speech, like when it comes to censorship by non-government institutions, corporations, colleges, other administrative bodies, that sort of censorship can sometimes be overbearing too. But there is a difference between censorship and political correctness. The consequences of violating censorship are institutional and official. The consequences of violating political correctness are social. If you say, that's so gay, or that guy's an idiot, what a retard, People may judge you and give you a funny look, but that's not censorship. That's a social expectation about civility and empathy. Freedom of speech does not mean freedom from the consequences of that speech. And there are gray areas. I mean, we can have a conversation about the Z and Zer pronouns and Canadian laws regarding speech and transgender issues, for example. I see the controversy there. I get it. And we can have a debate about that. There are some institutional civic implications with regard to free speech, compelled speech, etc. When it comes to the government telling people what to say and what not to say. That's probably for another video, but I understand why people have a problem with that. And I wouldn't call someone bigoted for wanting to explore those issues. But too much so-called political correctness that isn't by institutions and is just between individuals arises organically and has been a natural part of our social history just out of simple courtesy to others and their feelings. We've stopped using demeaning terms to refer to minorities, women, and mentally disabled people. I have to question your basic capability to empathize with other human beings if you say those changes are censorship and are inhibiting your ability to speak freely. It isn't thought policing. We're talking about natural changes of lexicon and speaking habits. Here's the fundamental question to explore with those who are endlessly up in arms about the so-called disastrous impact of political correctness. What is it that you truly want to say that you're not able to say because of political correctness. There are still ways of speaking and not speaking that are just inherently growing out of our improving tolerance towards groups that have been marginalized historically. 
I also don't understand why there are people who call themselves liberal and spend 99% of their time complaining about political correctness on Reddit or on their YouTube channels, wherever. Even if their complaints about political correctness are sometimes justified, it's low-hanging fruit. Yeah, political correctness is sometimes a problem, and it's sometimes used to warp debates or stop them altogether. But in and of itself, it is not the paramount issue that some make it out to be. And, quote, solving political correctness, whatever that even means, is not going to improve the lives of Americans and citizens of the world in the way that dealing with so many other issues would. Whether your audience is left-wing, right-wing, or somewhere in the middle, criticizing political correctness is just trendy right now, especially on the internet. It's profitable. It appeals to people's emotions. There are an endless number of people that are hungry for anti-PC talk, and it's way too easy. There are so many YouTube channels where if you were to turn it into a drinking game, take a shot every time you hear the word trigger warning, safe space, or regressive while we're at it, you'd be dead pretty soon. Okay, so talk about political correctness and how it's bad and how it's impacting society, but then move on to the countless other important issues that are impacting the world. If all you talk about is political correctness, I start to wonder whether that's the only thing you're capable of discussing, whether you actually know enough about policy and government to talk about other crucial issues. Blogs and YouTube channels who just moan nonstop about feminism and trigger warnings, commentators like these are just providing intellectual fast food. We also have to discuss the smokescreen of hiding behind the title of classical liberal And no, I'm not calling out my friend Dave Rubin here. Some so-called classical liberals have this attitude of, I'm the real original liberal. They bastardize the term classical liberal and use it as an excuse to rant endlessly about political correctness and identity politics without seriously dealing with other issues. I also suspect that many of these people are just closeted right-wing libertarians and conservatives who want to hang on to their liberal membership card, and they want to mask their social conservatism behind a word that sounds good, like classical liberal. Classical liberalism means free market capitalism, free trade, individual liberty, and the ideas of John Locke, Adam Smith, Thomas Jefferson. Classical liberalism doesn't directly translate to, hey, feminism is dumb, and I'll call transgender women he. Domineering political correctness and identity politics are problems. I've talked about them, no doubt. But we have to understand what domineering political correctness is. PC culture creates a problem when it prevents us from having honest conversations about Islam and terrorism, for example. When someone writes an article saying that all Islamic terrorism is exclusively motivated by politics, and it has nothing to do with religion in any way, they're misled or they're being dishonest, and they are creating an atmosphere where people are afraid to talk about the realities of things like martyrdom and religious dogma. That slows down human progress. Political correctness becomes counterproductive when Black Lives Matter activists say, all police officers are racist, or they take a Bernie Sanders rally hostage. Just another example or two. However, letting people use whatever bathroom they want does not limit your individual liberty. Calling a person in a wheelchair disabled instead of a cripple does not repress intellectual freedom, just like refraining from using ethnic slurs doesn't either. Claiming that you're a victim of the PC police doesn't exonerate you from being an ignoramus. Proudly calling yourself politically incorrect only rebrands your intolerance if you're needlessly disrespecting people. And referring to everything as political correctness makes the term lose its meaning like so many other terms already have, so that it doesn't have any power whenever its use is truly warranted. And even more importantly, ridicule and demean people who abuse power, corrupt politicians, people who deserve it not people who are just less fortunate or in a marginalized group.